For some reason, astronauts seem to require food, oxygen, water, and atmospheric maintenance in order to stay alive in space for any length of time, just as humans do on Earth. Astronauts have been living on the International Space Station for almost 20 years, and during that time have learned much about staying alive for extended periods of time in space. However, going to Mars will be far more difficult. My name is Ben Pearson, the Roadster Tracker, and today I'd like to talk about keeping astronauts alive in space for a duration of a mission to Mars. Astronauts living on the International Space Station require about two tons of supplies per year per astronaut in order to stay alive. This has been reduced somewhat with time as the ability to recover water and oxygen has improved. However, it still requires much resources to be maintained. The life support systems on the International Space Station can be summarized as follows. Water is shipped up via supply missions to the space station. That water in turn creates hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen is either vented off or used in a process to remove carbon dioxide using the Sabatier process. The Sabatier process will produce methane and water. The methane is currently vented from the space station. The splitting of water will create oxygen that the astronauts breathe on the space station. Astronauts will use this oxygen and create carbon dioxide, which is handled as previously mentioned. Trace contaminants are also filtered and vented away from the space station. Water is partially recycled to the best of our ability. Part of it is recycled from the air and part of it through a recycling system of urine and wastewater. These systems combined have an efficiency of about 74%, meaning that about 26% of the wastewater is completely wasted and vented out into space. For a mission to Mars, much higher efficiency is desired. For a similar system on Mars itself, many of these things can be manufactured from the environment. Water and oxygen in particular are available with the correct tools in order to process and create them. If stock hydrogen is brought to the surface of Mars to produce the rocket fuel to return home, it will in turn have water that could be used as a byproduct for the astronauts to drink and use for creating oxygen. However, there are better ways in order to create oxygen on the surface of Mars. The carbon dioxide itself can be split into carbon monoxide and oxygen. The oxygen will be used by the astronauts and the carbon monoxide vented out into the atmosphere. Water can also be found in the soil of Mars. Heating some soil on Earth will produce a small amount of water vapor, and on Mars it will produce the same thing. There are some regions that will produce more water than others, and these areas in particular will be of use for astronauts exploring the surface of Mars. This water could also potentially be used to make the rocket fuel for the return journey home in addition to the potable water. Of these, the greatest challenge will be getting water from the surface of Mars. This is one thing that has not been done in any significant quantities. However, it will be essential for any long duration exploration of the Red Planet by astronauts. All of these problems are relatively well understood. However, the greatest challenge will be in space food. Currently, space food can be saved for a fairly long period of time, but one year is a practical limit. Food can be stored on Earth for up to 30 years. However, these same mechanisms will not work as efficiently in space. These primarily work by using canned foods. Canned foods, while they are great at storing things for long periods of time, are very heavy and might not work as well in space as they would otherwise on Earth. They also have limits to what can actually be stored. Practically speaking, most of the food used by astronauts is freeze-dried, which improves the taste and texture and the nutritional value far better than most other systems. It can also be used very quickly and efficiently compared to some of the other means. It is also very mass efficient, with the packaging being primarily plastic. Canned foods would also be difficult to cook on Mars. Freeze-dried foods simply require hot water in order to be reconstituted, while canned foods require actual cooking implements. Currently, foods going to the International Space Station must be stable for 18 months. However, for a mission to Mars, a time period of 5 years is what is desired. There are very few foods that can be stored for that lengthy period of time. Eventually, food will be grown on Mars itself. However, this will not likely be done for the first few missions. 
It is not really known how well food will grow on Mars and could potentially be toxic if not properly managed. The soil on Mars contains none of the nutrients or organic compounds that are required to grow plants on Earth. While these can be produced with time, and the harmful contaminants in the Martian soil could be removed, it will take time and much work will need to be done to ensure that these will work properly. For the short-term system, a hydroponic system could be used. Hydroponic systems have been used on the International Space Station to grow food, and the astronauts have eaten a small portion of it. However, this takes up much space and a significant portion of water, and is not practical for the long term. In summary, we have most of the pieces required to make a manned mission Mars work as far as life support goes. The largest hurdle is the lack of long-term food storage. Given time, we can surmount that challenge. NASA and Roscosmos have dominated lead in the ability to keep astronauts alive for lengthy periods of time using their experience from the International Space Station. Thank you much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you have. Until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.